The Duty of Meditation by Thomas Manton Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide. Genesis chapter 24, verse 63 I shall sum up the intent of the whole verse in this one point. It is the duty of Christians to sequester and set apart some time and place for solemn meditation or exercising their souls in heavenly and holy things. My purpose is to speak of meditation, a duty unaccustomed and unpracticed. Both the practice and the knowledge of it are become strangers to us. The times are times of action and tumult, and we all think that we have so much to do with others that few desire to converse with God and themselves. Therefore, I shall make it my work to press the duty of meditation. Number one, that it is a duty and exercise of religion Number one, that it is a duty and exercise of religion appeareth by the evidence of scripture. It is commanded, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. It is made a character of a godly man. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. It is commended in the practice and example of the saints that were most famous in scripture. Isaac, in the text, Moses and David. And as it is plain by the evidence of scripture, so by the light of nature and reason. God that is a spirit, deserveth the most pure and spiritual worship, as well as such as is performed by the body. The thoughts are the eldest and noblest offspring of the soul, and the solemn consecration of them is fit for God. In the gospel, meditation is called for. I find in the Old Testament the main thing there called for is meditation in the law. In the gospel, we are directed to a new object, the love of Christ. That ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge. That is the study of saints. I confess it is more called for in the Old Testament, being gross and carnal. They needed greater enforcements to spiritual duties. But now it suiteth every way with the nature of our worship. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now worship in spirit and in truth is more agreeable to our state. Meditation is a pure and rational converse with God. It is the flower and height of consecrated reason. Number two, it is not a duty of arbitrary. It is not only a moral help that may be observed or omitted, but a necessary duty, without which all graces would languish and wither. Faith is lean and ready to starve unless it be fed with continual meditation on the promises. As David saith, Unless thy law had been my delight, I should then have perished in my affliction. Thoughts are the caterers of the soul that purvey for faith and fetch in food and refresh it with the comfort of the promises. Hope is low and doth not arise to such a fullness of expectation until by meditation we take a deliberate view of our hopes and privileges. Arise. Walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it on to thee. Our hopes arise according to the largeness of our thoughts. It is a great advantage. It is a great advantage to have our eyes open to view the riches of our inheritance and to have a distinct view of the hope of our calling. The apostle prays for the Ephesians, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Men of barren thoughts are usually of low hopes, and for want of getting to the top of Pisgah to view the land, our hearts sink within us. Certainly, hope thriveth best on the mount of meditation. Then for love, the sparkles of affection will not flow out unless we beat upon the will by constant thoughts. Affection is nourished by apprehension. The more constant and deliberate the thoughts are, 
the love is always deeper. Those Christians that are backward to the duty of meditation find none of those impulses and meltings of love that are in others. They do not endeavor to comprehend the height and breadth and length and depth of the love of Christ. Therefore, no wonder that their hearts are so narrow and so much impoverished towards God. Thus you see, it is a necessary duty. For daily readings and devotions, please subscribe to Every Creature Ministry.